Oops, that's the wrong place. Let me know when it's shared on uh, Facebook. Ugh. Can't do this right now. Um, here. Why is it night not working? I know I'm freaking logged in. Oh, no, and I don't need to have it full screen. Let me check it here. Let me get my eyes on. I just realized that. What the hell? What is it? Uh, Nightbot, Showbot, that stuff. Oh, I don't know what Nightbot is. Yeah, I know. It's the stuff that lets us, it'll automatically put, like, it prompts people to go to Patreon to check out our website. Oh. We can run contests with it. We can, when a caster comes in, we can acknowledge them. I have, like, bots that do a lot of that work. Um, people can suggest show titles for us. And the commands are not responding. Everyone, try it again. Right. Oh well, nothing to be done. I'll just have to um, talk to the creator of it. Oh, Bless you. Our page. Mm, I will be so glad when I get my computer out of. Yeah. Yep. So at least I can do video again, <laughs> and and run like more than two programs without it, like taking 16,000 hours to do. All right, here we go. Copy and Twitter and Twitter and paste. And there you go. And we are there. Watch us on Twitch uh, because that would be weird and echoey and give me all kinds of spasms. All right. And then, but, Discord. Yes. Diamond Club. Uh, where is the stream pimping thing? DCTV. All right. We're shared on uh, my media as well as Twitter. So we are good on that front. All right. Hold on. Okay. I'm doing something. Ugh. Hmm. I changed some things here. Stream shilling. There it is. <laughs> shield us out to the Diamond Club people so maybe some folks will show up. Okay. Alright. Uh, 
Guess that's it. Ready when you are. All right. <clears throat> God, family is God's way of teaching you how to talk to someone that you would normally cross the street to avoid. Unknown. Home is the place where, when you have to go there, they have to take you in. Robert Frost. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive them as the Lord forgave you. Colossians 3.13 Get to know your parents. You never know when they'll be gone for good. Be nice to your siblings. They're the best link to your past and the people most likely to stick with you in the future. Baz Luhrmann, everybody's free to wear sunscreen. Let's talk about talking. Welcome to Heresy and Hearsay, a podcast to reclaim faith in the political, in the context of political discussion. I'm Reverend Barney, and you can follow me on Twitter at Sephiroth II, and you can follow the show on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and any podcast catcher. Just look for Heresy and Hearsay. Please like, share, subscribe, and follow us. Also, give us a review that helps others find us. And as always, to help me today, her Empress, Ma the Im Imperial Majesty, Ember, Queen of Narnia, Chatelaine of the Care Paravel, Empress of the Lone Island. Hello, I am September, and you can follow me on Twitch and Twitter at 9 of 12. That's N I N E O F 1 2. And you can hear me on the Geek Grills podcast. Heresy and Hearsay has a Patreon site. You can find it at patreon.com slash heresyandhearsay. And please visit there today to support us. Just $2 a month helps go, um, sorry, it goes a long way to help us make this humble show. You can also contribute with bits in Twitch or subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime. You know, we've been doing this for 30 episodes and I still mess up that intro how many times? I'm just like... Oh, I stumbled too, but it's because some... One of the pets is like banging at the door at the bottom of my stairs. <laughs> Let, you're talking and not letting me in and mess with your computer. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about talking to the other side. And not just the political other side, but also religious other side. And, and it, me in September, we have different views politically though we line up fairly close but we still have that's one of the reasons i like having september here is that we can have a conversation you know about the levels of even our leftiness um so you know, <laughs> well we're a lot closer on politics than we are on religion <laughs> true but uh, there there are still things in politics side that that we ha it's and i think it's less of a fundamental and more of a procedural way of doing things i'm very this needs to be done with a you know with a hammer and you're saying no it needs to be done gently with a scalpel kind of situation because <laughs> that's my personality to begin with but uh uh when september was out i asked for a q a and i got one question and it just kind of lined up with our um topic today so Ryan Graham on Facebook, I thank you for uh, asking the question and uh, being a listener. He asked, what would it take to bring the country back towards the middle? Do you think we're too fractured for that to be an option in the next 10 years? My... <laughs> I don't want to go back to the middle. Okay, first off, the and this has been proven statistically and i should have brought I had the charts and stuff but the republican party has moved further to the right over the last 20 years the uh, while the democratic party has remained fairly centered where it's been the republican party has moved further to the right um so if you're asking can we get the because I remember, and don't get me wrong, I remember there were times when there were reason where I would consider reasonable Republicans out there, those that you know would would may disagree on how the country should be ran, but it was not something that was fundamentally 
broken as we have it now because if Nixon was president now, I don't think the Republican Party would go after Nixon like they did back in the 70s. Am I wrong on this? Do you, How do you feel about this? I, well, I mean, yeah, I don't think they would. Obviously, they're not going after Trump. Um, with, uh, although the actual legality of things uh, is harder to prove with what Trump's doing, but we're looking at a huge difference, a, a huge shift in that party and their priorities. Um, actually, there was a really good example just in the last few days because Nixon started the whole endangered species list and expanded that. And um, Trump just ditched it like it's not really important to protect endangered species. Uh, so there's been just a lot of ideological shifts. I don't, I think we can move, I don't think we have to move more toward the middle. And here's, the, the problem I see isn't, I don't think the politics themselves uh, have moved away from the middle. But the ideologies and the communication speed make it look that way. So we swung and we swung to Obama and then we swung as far as Trump and people are reacting out of fear. But if more people participated, if you look at the points of view and polling of um, voters in general, they're sitting pretty much in the middle in ideologies in what they really want. So I think it's participation that and and who's loud and who's not which makes it look like we are even more fractured than we actually in reality are ideologically as a country well i mean there's statistics out there of like you know gun control 90 percent of the nation want some form of gun control want background tracks you know things of that nature you know most of the nation is on board for lgbtq uh rights uh and and uh women's rights of choice of choice you know so those are considered left leaning but you know when you have a plurality of the nation leaning that way and but well, exactly is- if you look at the democratic party platform and you look at the republican party platform the democrat party is not terribly leftist no it's not 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 i mean you know I want, you know, socialism. I want, you know, I want a very, I want us to where the top tier of our government, uh, top tier of the uh, richest pay 90% of taxes after a certain level. And I want the rest of us to pay about 30 to 40%. But on the same thing, that is a very, that's a socialistic situation. But I believe in that. But my, the party that most represents that, it doesn't believe in that, or a good chunk of it doesn't. Now, you know, and that, but that's starting to shift as well. Mm, I don't know if it's shifting as much as you think, just because we have a handful of new people who are carrying um, the democratic socialist torch, which has actually been the reality of our country. Uh, of our entire republic it is a democratic you know socialist ever since the new deal and we've been practicing democratic socialism more than being a pure republic for that long uh, but acting like it's new because you know we've got aoc and bernie um just being elected as socialists i i don't think it's as much an ideal shift in the whole country I don't, I don't know if we're going to keep going down that path. We'll see. Well, and, and well, true. I, I, I'm just, you know. People are afraid it. of it. They're pulling out the old Red Scare stuff over it. Which is horribly ironic, given the way that our current administration uh, is handling our relationships with Russia. I know. It's, it's like, <laughs> I'm like. I, it feels like they enjoy bathing in irony, and I don't completely understand that myself. It's just or hypocrisy. They they really bathe in that a lot. But it's bizarre. It's it is sometimes. But the the other thing is is if you look at our nation 
And if you look at the votes of our nation, especially if you look at the national elections, Gore lost by, uh, did not lose the popular vote. <laughs> yes, did not actually lose, just lost. But right, because of the system we have. And the same thing for, you know, for Clinton. She did not lose the popular vote. But because we have this system that is archaic in some ways, but I, I still think is important in others, um, it's one of those situations where you, where you can have those happen. But our nation as a whole is more uh, leaning, I guess, as far as polling is concerned. And we found out what polling does for us in, in the last election. Uh, the, the last election that, you know, but the polling sort of leans us to the, to the left or to the Democratic Party. And I'm not saying the Democratic Party as a whole is a left-leaning party. They have some progressive ideas in it, but it's as a whole is more centrist than it is actually left leaning. Um, it really is. And that's the thing. People like in this question, they keep asking, can we get back to the center? Well, there's already a really big chunk of people at the center. I don't know that any of them are Republicans anymore. I, I, I have a heart. There's a handful like in the sample of people I talk to, and I, I'm pretty good about keeping all the doors open to, uh, you know, in my real life, uh, to folks on the other side of the political spectrum. But, who there's, I mean, there's wing nuts on both sides. There are. Don't get me wrong. There, there are. There are. But as far as are. actual platform ideologies, I mean, I just, I refer people to go read them. That's one of the things I do. Like, go read the party platform, the actual national party platform, and you can start there. And then read your state party platform and see what matches with your particular ideals and morals and what's closest to it because no organization is ever going to be perfectly in line with your ideals. If they are, you have a whole other set of problems. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you might be a fundamentalist if. Yeah. Uh, but the views of the Democratic Party are primarily centrist. There are a few things that may be considered outlying. Um, but I can't even think of one off the top of my head. Like, for instance, a few years ago, we had uh, transgender folks added to our non-discrimination clause in the party platform. But that was just in North Carolina. Um, and then you have to try to get it, those things enacted in the federal uh, level, you know, in the national party platform. And I'm not sure if we have completed that task because I'm not on the state executive committee anymore. But as far as getting the EEOC updated, which is the Equal Opportunity Employment um, Act, transgender folks are not included in that non-discrimination federal law. And for years and years, I know Democrats have been trying to push to like expand that law to cover more people. Like it, you know, it was expanded. Initially, it was you know. Uh, black folks, and then it was women, and we're trying to make sure everyone is protected by, under EEOC. But the party can't hold officials that run on their platform to it until it becomes part of the platform. Like, that's the nuts and bolts, is go ahead and get involved, and then you get to create the platform. And, you know, if you think everything is too far left or too far right, well, get involved where you see there's a problem and, and pull it towards yourself. <laughs> right and, and here's and here's the thing this whole centrist or or there's the left center and right most people except for again the fun, the fundamentalists uh are they swing depending on the issue and it's an issue based system you know like i i am i would i like having I was raised in the military, you know, by my father was in the military and everything else. And I, so I do believe in a strong military that takes care of its, takes care of its own, making sure they have great health care, child care, making sure that once they leave, that they have a good GI bill, that kind of stuff. And that, that may, 
be considered more conservative. I'm also, I believe in harsher penalties for certain crimes. I also believe in lighter penalties for nonviolent drug offenses. You know, so it, there's that dichotomy there. I believe in harsher penalties for, you know, for uh, violent crimes as well as for, um, you know, for white collar crimes because of how it destroys people. But I'm less, uh, but uh, so that is a very conservative, well, that's very conservative, but on the same thing, you know, the, the nonviolent crimes, I don't consider as, uh, you know, especially drug related offenses. Well, I think our whole country, like the the question posed to us, you know, what would it take this, to bring this country back toward the middle? The country is in the middle. We're still in the middle. It, it We sway one way or another with leadership, but actually enacting legislation takes your legislatures. And then there's the local stuff and there's like every level of it can't. It's designed to not swing too far in one direction or another. I think some electoral reform um, and elections reform outright and campaign finance reform can still be enacted. And I hope it will be with some of the new um, Congress people and committees working uh, on those sort of things in our legislature now. But to enact the will of the people and then we have the judicial side like the checks and balances are still there they're still in place uh even though i feel like this president has dismantled as much as he could because with executive orders and with his appointments and his firing people because you know that's what he is practiced at doing um uh, trying to take all the balances and checks away from him but there are just other branches of government that are still keeping that in place so the country itself as a whole can't swing completely you know one direction or another if it were up to one branch if it were up to the executive branch you know trump has even talked about it he would like to have indefinite turns and just keep being president inevitably and you know he's locking people up we, we could be in a full-on fascist state by now if we didn't have these checks and balances so the key is can we get back to to just behaving more civilly that's in your hands can we stop fracturing it and letting the voices heard only be the extreme ones we hear in the media yeah take part do more than vote show up so that's not just crazy screaming people that are heard if you show up for meetings go watch your city council meeting whatever your voice gets heard and more people do polling and when you look at pe how people you know actually vote regardless of popular vote situations look at your local elections more people are in the middle they just have to step up and participate more right and and, and talking about the city council thing uh i kind of sort of wanted to to i thought about putting him as a carrot i don't know if you saw this on twitter or on on facebook but there was a, a there was a city council meeting where they where the city council voted to make their city a sanctuary city um and there was trump supporters there shouting down the the council saying you know you're doing against you know you're against the president you're against the you know the people and stuff like that and there was this guy who was sitting there at this council meeting and normally she would have gotten the focus but he was just laughing at her he was just laughing hysterically at, at this insanity that this woman was saying and it killed her momentum and it, and she basically walked out uh her and her husband they basically walked out because she was filming it you know filming herself doing it and this would have this would have normally been the viral video but because there's other people there that were that didn't shout her down but basically made her argument uh neutered her argument neutered her screaming okay barney yeah. i don't know if you missed part of what you were just the story you were trying to tell but it sounds like you're saying that the person who was trying to make the sanctuary city was getting no no no, no no okay no, I, you, you, no. you missed a point in your story <laughs> i am sorry i apologize thank you no so the so the council had voted to have the city sanctu uh, as a sanctuary city there was a woman in the audience who was wearing maca stuff ah okay uh, okay I have, now it makes so, more sense. <laughs> okay. 
So she was shout. She was holding up posters, had her camera pointing, you know, so that they, so she's being videotaped or, or being, you know, streamed or whatever, shouting these things about how, you know, they're going against the will of the people and the will of the nation and, and that they were all against, uh, you know, America and stuff like that. And there's this guy sitting off to the side, just laughing at her. And it basically, it, sometimes the, it, you don't have to shout someone down. You could just look at them and basically the look on your face or even laughter will make them realize that they're sounding really stupid. And, and it's on both sides. Don't get me wrong. There are people that on, on the left side that I, I am, I do not believe. I understand about punching Nazis and don't get me wrong. I am not going to, I, I don't think you should be not unless we're in an actual war with Nazis or you're defending yourself hmm. because I don't believe in, I don't believe in the violence. I also don't believe in this milk take milkshake thing because I worry, you know, even if they aren't doing any, the people who are doing the milkshaking, aren't doing anything it looks bad and i remember years ago i am not the biggest bill gates supporter and years ago he got pied in the face <laughs> and i laughed at it and everything and my mom's like and my mom who is a, a liberal like i am my mom is like that's horrible it's like why is that look at the terror in his face yeah it's a pie but he didn't know that and it could have easily been acid and I'm going, oh, yeah. So I've always had this, you know, at that point, do your protesting, fine, everything. I don't like the glitter bombs. I don't like, and I understand it's a visceral. It makes you feel good. But, and these people are horrible, especially the Nazis and stuff like that. They're horrible people. Don't get me wrong. I'm not defending them, but that does not help discourse. And I know they don't want discourse. But it looks bad for everybody else. People actually empathize. With, people that may be on the fence or people in the center will be turned off on your argument because you just threw a substance in this guy's face. And yes, it could have. It's just milkshake, but it could have been something worse. And I laughed at when Richard Spencer got punched in the face. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it on a visceral level. But then I stepped back and it's like... That's not good either, because it doesn't help. You know what I'm saying? A a am I wrong in this assessment? No, I mean it shouldn't. Or even shouldn't evolve, devolve into physical actions. Right? Is the simple? It's the grown-up action <laughs> is to, you know, make the decision to use your words. And look, I I understand. And I do. You get so frustrated, you know, about the Richard Spencers and the Ben Shapiro's and the, you know, and the Crowders of the world and the Tucker Call and all of them. If you're on the left like us or people who get that upset with Rachel Maddow. But how could you be upset at Rachel Maddow? Look at Rachel. How could you be upset at Rachel Maddow? She's an amazing <laughs> journalist. And I, 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 I have I have a lesbian crush. She's on snarky her. as hell. No, I, I I know she is. I remember her Air America days. Yeah, I remember she's snarky, and I but I loved her, um, you know, and I still do. Um, uh, so you know, but on the same thing, I can understand why you would be upset at like Keith Oberman. You know, I am like the biggest Keith Oberman fan on the planet. As you know, it was his rants and everything that got me through the Bush administration, um, and it's what I want to. <laughs> be like but i understand on a visceral level getting back at these people because you disagree with them but on a visceral level is not a communication level well like tucker carlson always stuck in my craw like that little weenie jeez louise um i, I had a videotape i of when john stewart went on uh, that show uh, 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 on the Crossfire show oh. on CNN, yeah. That oh, was still... it's like one of my favorite TV moments ever. It's like, 
It's like, oh, you're not as funny. He just kept trying to get John Stewart to make jokes. He was trying to lighten up, and John Stewart was taking him on. Like, you're hurting America. This kind of argument you're engaging in is is bad for everyone. He's like, oh, you're not very funny, and you're not on your show. He's like, well, you're still an asshole on yours. Um, and it was just true. And John Stewart, look at him. He has always stuck to using his words, and he just helped our 9-11 first responders get a, finally a permanent funding bill for their illnesses and stuff. So I've always, he's been my hero and Tucker Carlson is a damn weenie. And I, I, as much as I, if I met him in person, I might like to slap him. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, but I mean, people like Oberman and Rachel Maddow, they're not changing hearts and minds though. They're really not. I, I love them, but they're spouting facts and that doesn't work for people and it makes them angry. Um, unfortunately, which is one of the biggest challenges we have when talking to people who we don't agree with. Right. No, I, 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 because you spout facts and, they, and it, you know, or even if... Well, they're in our echo chamber, for one. Yeah, I, and that's that's the thing, is is that they're not, they're, they're preaching the converted. You know, it's like when uh, Keith Overman did this whole thing of uh, the closer on GQ magazine, you know, he did a video essay, uh, video essays to try to cl help close the deal for, uh, for Clinton. But the problem is, is, is that the only people that was listening to him wa was people on the left, you know, mm -hmm. at the, and, and that's, I think that's the other thing is there's, it's not so much that there's not, that there, that there's not a center. It's just that the voices are not on the center. There's not a central voice, you know. There is and, just people don't aren't interested in that. They're right. They well, want to watch Fox, or they want to mm -hmm. watch MSNBC. They don't want to watch both, certainly. And if they do, they're not going to sit and watch CNN or look up the BBC version of a news story, which I tend to do, or Al Jazeera America. Those both being very unbiased sources. Like, just to see what's going on. Like, from another, you know, point of view. I I, I do it. <laughs> I see a story that's really swung one far, uh, in one direction or another, whether it's just in the language or whatever. If I don't recognize the source, I will go look at trusted sources that aren't, you know, anywhere on the spectrum, like toward the, the, the are more in the center or just completely removed. It's being covered from another country who doesn't have the same interests um, as any American media company just to get closer to the facts and make my own decision. Right. And that, uh, yeah, uh, uh, BBC is what, where I go most, uh, BBC or NPR. Is yeah. Where I NPR, I trust. Um, I mean, they do have opinion shows on them, but it, with their opinion shows, they normally have, uh, like uh, back in the day, Diane Rehm, uh, her show, they she would have both sides. She would have conservative columnists, and she would have liberal columnists, and then she would have you know just new, just standard news people, mm -hmm. you know that that would come on and they would have discussions, especially on Fridays. But that's one of the things. Yeah, do I listen to mostly? left-leaning stuff yes but i also when i listen to it i pause it you know they'll bring up a news story i'll pause it i'll bring up that news story i'll read it for myself so that you know if and then i'll listen to what they have to say about it and if i disagree with it or I, not disagree but you know then i can tell if they're being factual or if they're twisting things for their own narrative and some in most cases they aren't but in some cases they are but i you know but it's also it's a reaffirming you know because with this show i'll be honest with this show i do do uh i do watch some of the other programming you know on youtube because that's where i primarily get my stuff i don't do a lot of i can't do fox uh but i, I don't watch tv typically but i'll i will watch like um, uh, I will watch, for example, um, I apologize. <laughs> Probably Democracy uh, Now. 
well, that seems in your bent? Well, I, I watched the majority report, uh, but what I'm saying is I'll watch the other side. I'll watch some oh, clips okay. of, of of a Ben Shapiro, or I'll watch some clips of Trey uh, of uh, of Crowder. Uh, you know, those are the two big quote unquote influencers, so that I know what the other side is saying. Then I normally have to take a walk around my house to avoid throwing my computer around because I disagree so badly. But I do listen and and everything. So I have a great suggestion you might want to try then. <laughs> many, many years ago, I found I was um, on the treadmill and it was back when Glenn Beck still had his show. Right. And my heart rate jumped so hard, so fast um, and I, I, I'll, it's like, I'll never forget it. Cause I was reading what he was saying. Cause the closed captions on it's at the gym. And what he's saying was in direct conflict with the facts in the chart behind him. And I was just, the fact that people wouldn't even notice that was so infuriating. So my heart rate just climbs. And then the tr- treadmill went down to a zero incline. Like I was like, well, crap, it's going to wreck my exercise, but I, I could have sat on my couch and got my cardio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but now um, I don't I don't go to YouTube for news. Um, the only time I go to YouTube for news is when I want to see an actual clip of something that has been reported and I want to see it enacted myself. So I'll look for video sources there. I like to listen to NPR because when they have different people, um, they will have opposing viewpoints on any show when they have a discussion. And I appreciate that. But I do, um, I'll stay up sometimes. Last night I stayed up and I watched The Daily Show and I watched Rachel Meadow. And I watch, I end up seeing Fox because when I go to the gym, I take a treadmill in front of Fox and so I can read along and see, you know, that's when I see what the right is reporting. Okay. And it's, it, it keeps me going because, I mean, I get wrapped up enough. I don't get as mad and my heart rate doesn't charge up the way it used to, but I'm getting that out again. I've already got my heart rate up on the treadmill, but it definitely distracts me enough because in my head I'm analyzing what they're saying. I'm like, I can't believe they said that, but it gets my mind off of how long I've been on. Like, I can go longer on the treadmill when there's really good political news in front of me, even when it's being reported from the other side. <laughs> I can only imagine what 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 uh, what I'd do if I was watching like Tucker Carlson while on the bike or something like that. I'd Reading just... it, <laughs> it can be a lot better than listening to his voice, though. Let me tell you, <laughs> that's that's true. And, and look, to be fair, Bill O'Reilly is no longer in um, is no longer on television, which is you know very helpful for me because that was the one that just you know would cause me to have nosebleeds just you know i the, with him the the most it wasn't even him himself that would aggravate me um and i and i was able to let go of it after seeing him with john stewart a few times because he knew it he was playing the game and he knew damn well he was playing a game. Bill O'Reilly said all that outrageous stuff. He didn't. He doesn't necessarily believe any of that. He just talked to the game, and he was playing it. He was being an actor in it. He's he admitted it out loud. The fact that other people were taking his news was a little irritating, but at least it made it laughable. Um, although I suppose, I mean, that's its own kind of rude. I am going to post in our notes a really good article I found um, from Helio about how and why facts do not change your mind, but how you can work to change someone's mind. And this is not only talking about, um, you know, scientifically changing someone else's mind, but changing your own mind when you find yourself, you have put yourself in a bubble and perhaps you've got like confirmation bias tendencies. (laughs) Uh, It's a really, really good article. And I suggest everyone out there, give it a read. It's not very long, but it explains some very simple steps you can take, like giving the mind an out, um, not treating people like with the I told you so, because then they're just going to zip right back into their hole. Like you might think you're funny and it feels really good to say, see, once somebody comes around, but you'll lose them again. So that's not a good way to have healthy, productive discourse. Like don't belittle other people because then you're just going to lose. The other, another thing for, especially with yourself is separating yourself from your beliefs. 
and that's a they don't mention it in this article but uh, another thing people can look into is nonviolent language and where you're owning things that are yours and separating an idea from a person these can help either sell you know what you're putting out there as actual valuable information to them instead of you trying to push your facts on them right which <laughs> is a weird turn to begin with that people don't understand that you know facts are facts um, but they start saying facts are facts about opinions and that's been a treacherous slope for a long time in our media but if we are empathic when we speak to others and don't use violent language we can overcome some of this in our everyday lives yeah, no, uh, and that that works really well. Um, and, and the other thing is um, that when you, I have my family is very is very conservative. They, you know, I've mentioned this before. They're very conservative and everything. So when I um, I try my best not to broach the subject to begin with. Not because, because I know I'm not going to convince them, but also because when I'm having a family get together, I, um, I'm there to have a family get together. There are times and places for if and, and, and I, and the biggest one is, is this was after my parents had passed away. We were, uh, uh, I was up visiting for a holiday and my uncle, my, my cousin sorry my cousin was going off about obamacare and stuff like this and blah 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 and i was i i got up was leaving the room going outside to have a cigarette and he just kept going and going and uh i slammed my foot to where i basically shook the house and it's like look i'm here to spend time with my family not to have political discussion you want to have a political discussion you have my phone number call me any other day of the week other than this and I will be more than happy to have that discussion. And that's the thing. I, I'm willing to be open to have those discussions. And, sir, and, and, and But I'm not willing to have them at family get-togethers. Because that's not what, you know, I think that's part of the other problem is, is, is that we don't set guidelines and boundaries saying, okay, look, if we want to have this discussion. You, I will give you my phone number and we will have this discussion. But this is my family this is our family time to be together. We don't see each other and let's just be a family. We can, I suppose. I mean, and that's your boundary and you're perfectly, you know, entitled to your own boundaries and you should make those clear, um, in the beginning, I suppose, or, or talk to whoever you're gathering with ahead of time. Um, it's not a philosophy I subscribe to because who better than the people closest to you and friends and family to, have this kind of discourse or practice reasonable and nonviolent discourse with. Um, and I've been in situations where I've had to diffuse things, but I'm also pretty good at that. Um, like my mother's ex-boyfriend, her family was very, very conservative, even though they, you know, had to go to McDonald's to work after they retired. And, you know, <laughs> um, my mom would get very, belligerent um or just laughing at them like right at the dinner table and or storming out and stomping and making noise in another room uh, and that kind of thing and i disagreed with them on a lot of things and i was able to do it in a good-natured manner in a non-belittling manner and kind of just make the peace and distract from you know uh whoever got upset and I think we could all benefit from practicing this with people that we love and care for. I'm also a person who's had whoo, friends who have very, very different views um, most of my life. I mean, when I was in college, I remember having a party where, goodness, it was like my friends, the nerds and theater geeks. And then the my roommate's friends were all the, the bikers and, and strippers. And we thought, this might not go well, <laughs> but no matter the, the spectrum of friends I've had in my life, when I have a gathering, I'm just like, listen, be decent to each other. If you can't be decent to each other, don't come. 
but I'm not going to put restrictions on what other people can talk about. And if they do start, you know, being, if there's vile language used, I'd ask them to leave. And so I've never actually had a problem. Um, I give people more credit than that, I guess. And I guess maybe I've just been lucky, but I haven't had any fights break out yet. <laughs> well, and again, it's not like I... I, I, I mean, you've been to my parties. We sat there talking religion amongst a bunch of heathens. I uh, I know. And here's the... I, I, and I have no problems with open dialogue. Uh, it's like I have some friends of mine who are pagan, who are, you know, who have a very bad view of christianity and so they're they're i, I don't want to say hostile and atheist and i have a lot of atheist friends and i kind of and we've had this discussion but i kind of they kind of fall into two categories ones that are sincere atheists and ones that are just man, angry at god so they don't want to believe that that's my my mm -hmm. view uh, he so right now. I mean, I've been known uh, to m refer to myself as a recovering Catholic. Yeah. So yeah, you know, but I I'm willing to have these discussions with people of different faiths and religions and and talk about it and walk away feeling okay about those kind of discussions. Um, and I don't have that pro and and I don't mind having that discussion as far as conservative and liberal and stuff like that if we can agree that we're not going to be hyperbolic and we're not going to make it personal you know I'm and politics going... i think is actually harder in this day and age it is uh, but and and it's what i said at the beginning it's like look i told i told him straight up you know you want you've got my phone number or i will give you my phone number we can have this discussion any other day of the week and i don't mind having that discussion but there's a difference between having that discussion and a setting that is supposed to be joyful and stuff like that. And everybody's just grumbly and angry and, and tense because, you know, there are people who are on the left and people who are on the right. And, you know, we sniped at each other before the meal has started. Mm. And, and then, you know, then, you know, no one's happy. So, you know, there's a, t I think it's more of a time and a place, you know? Sure. So that that's, I think part of it, you know, and parties are a perfect example versus like a family gathering because parties you can go around have a discussion have you're having a few drinks and it's a normally like in your party situation it's mostly people having a few drinks sitting getting little clusters talking about this and then the people will kind of disperse from the clusters and then reform other clusters and and have long discussions i'm the type of person who likes to find one spot that's comfortable sit down preferably close to the food so that i can just reach over and grab the food and then you know people will eventually come to me and that has always been the case i'm just you know a lazy person that way <laughs> when it comes to parties it's like look always i'm at a party in the kitchen at parties <laughs> yeah. remember that song <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's where you find me i'll be at the party i'll be in the kitchen but you know it's like uh, I, I but i typically do that i'm not a wanderer you know, but people tend to wander towards me and we'll have discussions and we'll have talks and, and everything else. And we'll talk about everything and anything. And I have no problem with it as long as we're all respectful, you know, and you can have a respectful discussion. I have I've had or well, had apparently uh, your family's not capable of it. <laughs> but that's family. That's why I wanted to start off with that first. Quote. But some families are right. And again, you also have to judge, judge by your own dynamics. You know, you, our family, you know, on my on my father's side of the family, they didn't drink. You know, uh, well, they some of them couldn't drink uh, because of their habits that they had had. You know, there's an addictive personality trait in my side of the family. Um, so, you know, we didn't drink. There was, you know, drinking. There baptist so there's not a lot of drinking anyways stuff like that so we make our you know so there wasn't stuff to settle down normally it's the macy <laughs> days parade and stuff like that but you know it's one of those situations where it's not it's not good to do it there it's it's not good to sure. do it at that time sure. for my family other sure. families you may be able to have those discussions and that's perfectly fine too but it's like your mother. Your mother couldn't have that rational discussion, but you can. And it's also what we learn. 
you know, and how we deal with things. I am a very passionate individual and my passions get the best of me sometimes. So I have to stamp that down. So you want to hear a super passive aggressive story? Sure. <laughs> I, my, my father is on completely the other side of the political spectrum than I am. Um, most of the time. And, and, and I, he, like, he's an equal opportunity bigot. He's got a pet name for every race. Um, and I grit my teeth a lot. I love him. I feel sorry for him. I can't write him out of my life. And I think that's, I'm going to say, quick, I'll interject on myself quickly. I think it's a lot of the problems we have right now um, as a society and, and women and people of color in particular and people in the LGBTQ community, like, talking to Republicans and not judging them is very, very difficult because we feel like they're taking the side that is specifically against us and doing harm. But anyway, um, my dad is one of those people. And I listen to him rant about crazy stuff. Um, I've <laughs> been sitting in a bar and somebody he worked with bought us a drink. And the happened to be african-american guy at the end of the bar and it's like oh you know they bought your drinks and dad's like oh, your welfare check come in today as if that were funny um <laughs> it's a guy he worked with keep in mind Whew. right so this is my dad's sense of humor so then i got elected to be in obama Day the first time uh for the 2008 election and i was home visiting and i was talking about it and i was excited about you know the process and having gone this far and, you know, I'd gone to, I, went to, I was going to women's campaign school and all this stuff. So I'm getting ready to go on my trip to Denver for the DNC and I'm talking to everybody about it and I didn't get shouted down or, you know, criticized or whatever um, at the table. We saw, there was, oh, that's really interesting. And wow, I didn't know you could do that. And like, people can just, I mean, you're a housewife. And, you know, they were able to appreciate my accomplishments. And then my dad walked past me, like the conversation kind of ended and we were having coffee or whatever. And he walked past me to go to, there was a, a bathroom in the back hall behind me. And he just kind of leaned over real close. And he had this, his hand, his money folded up really, really small in his hand, right? He's like, I don't, I don't approve what you're doing electing that that nigger, but here, I'm proud of you, and slip me fifty. So, <laughs> like, this is weird, passive aggressive bullshit, right? But like, his version of civil, and so my version of civil was to say, thank you, and not shove it up his nose, um, but in fact take it to Denver and elect you know, President Obama. Well, elect him as our nominee to the Democratic Party in that instance. So. I, I would, <laughs> you see, what I would have done, and this is how we're different, I would have spent that $50 on buying an Obama t-shirt and hat and sending it to, to my dad. And, you know. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, I, I, I had plenty of stuff to spend money on, including the trip, which I think I'm actually still paying for. Um, but I did send my dad some great pictures because I found um, my dad... My mother has never referred to my dad by his name, I don't think, since the divorce when I was like nine years old, right? All I have ever heard her refer to him as, as his redneck. And he knows that, and, you know, he, he knows he's redneck, whatever. There was a group standing outside the convention center in Denver with a big banner that said, Rednecks for Obama. I printed a picture of that to give him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's wonderful. That's great. Yeah. They unfortunately didn't have T-shirts, but he wouldn't have worn it anyway. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, I, I. Unfortunately, with me, and this is, and these are things that I have to learn, and this is one of my Christian failings as well. Is I, I, I am petty. A lot of the times, I don't mean to be. I, I probably not. Oh, to that's be. no good. Yeah, <laughs> but on the same thing, I'm just like, and it's like this article, and I'm gonna have to read it. I haven't had a chance to. Read you it really yet. should, because it does refer to when you're a victim of short and afraid like that, which you are. Um, you know, especially when I like to be. I am one of these people that I will beat you into like a tent peg with a sledgehammer in the ground with facts. 
and be like, this is this, and this is this, and this is this, you know, because, and, and you know, this article says that's not going to change their mind. I under, and part of me understands that in a, in a higher cognitive level. But again, it's that visceral level. I won't punch a Nazi, but I will shout down a Nazi all day long. You know, I have no problems with that. So there's that. I have to learn to be better. Um, and that's why I think we're, ha I wanted to have this discussion because we've talked about that in, in other ways that, that I am, that one of the things we wanted, I wanted to do with this program is I wanted to be able to talk to the other side. I'm shouting at the other side and that's not doing us any good. So I want uh, this show to be useful as a resource to say these people, you know, this person here believes in God, believes in Jesus, believes in you know, Christ, you know, but he sees the world a different way. Maybe you should listen and see what he has to say, you know, um, and but, you know, they're going to listen to me just going off for 20 minutes. <laughs> on, on, on televangelists which to be fair i did get some compliments on that you know uh, 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 in messenger and stuff but mm -hmm. that's not helpful that's not helpful to what the to our mission statement that i say every time and botch every time is yeah. is that this is you know we're reclaiming uh re we're reclaiming faith in the context of political discussion but we're not, but I'm not having a political discussion. So I wanted us to, to start this, uh, not having, you know, we're not having a discussion. We're having, this is, you know, I'm shouting at you that you're wrong. So right. I think I, I, I wanted to have this show to kind of say that we, myself, this is what I want to do. I can, you know, I can post rants all day long, but it's not what the show is representative of. And that's what I want to do is I want us to, especially myself, and I say us, but I mean the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and I know I, your priority is, you know, the faith stuff, and it's not as much with me, but my trying to keep political discourse and bring that back to a more civil habit uh, is kind of my more strongly held goal in this, in this endeavor. Um, when you do read that article, but I'll, I'll share this out loud for our listeners because, you know, very few people go through and click the links in the notes. But to think about in this idea of how you can and will change minds is, and thinking about yourself, ask yourself what fact would change one of my strongly held opinions. If the answer is no fact would change my opinion, you're in trouble. A person who's unwilling to change his or her mind, even with an underlying change in the facts, is by definition a fundamentalist. And I think that's really, really important to ask yourself that question now and again. I try to police myself with that exact thing. Like, if the facts change. It's one of the reasons I get very upset when a politician changes tax or changes their mind or evolves their position because facts come to light and people attack them. I like you really just want to be a stubborn idiot instead of taking science into account or an event into account and evolving and growing like that's that's human i want humans to represent me i'm human <laughs> right no and it's like uh, obama he's he's the prime example of that when it came to gay marriage how he felt it was more it should be more civil liberties and stuff like that and he evolved in his, you know, in the election and in the presidency. And it's like, you know what? I was wrong. This should be, you know, it should be a marriage issue. It shouldn't be civil liberties because that's a second class citizenship. Mm -hmm. And I was wrong, you know, um, and, and my views on homosexuality has changed from when I was a teenager until today. My views on the death penalty, you know, have changed. You know, it's like, you know, they're. Epstein's in the news because of the suicide quotation marks um, are you know happened. I'm not saying that's that it was a nefarious plot. I'm just saying it could have been also someone in the jail doing it, um, not for any reason, but because he was you know he was he was in jail for being um, 
molesting children and prison politics, those those people don't live. So the, I'm not saying it's a nefarious plot. I'm just saying that it may not have been a suicide. But anyways, my point is, is, is that 15 years ago, frying today, no. I don't care how horrible that individual is. That is a judgment I cannot provide. I cannot provide a judgment of because they're because a I think it's just morally wrong uh, for the state to kill someone. That's the you know that's the end of my argument. Now it, it evolved over time. It was to from yeah I'm okay with the death penalty to well we could you know I would get rid of the death penalty you know because there are been people that have been you know they're they're you can kill someone who is not guilty to, you know, and we should get rid of it to avoid that. Save one, to save one person's life that is not guilty, we should abolish it to, no, it's morally wrong. So I understand about evolving, and, and I think that's the thing that, that we have to understand. And well, it's something I, where you can't very well just use your scripture to back it up, even though people do in the news right. all the time, because you can find arguments on either side for that one. <laughs> well, as a Christian, Jesus basically said, you know, you know, and uh, turn the other cheek. You know, he was basically saying it. Does, you don't. Do yeah, but don't forget, that. people tend to use Leviticus, and there's a lot of people you should not suffer to live. Um, so, with that, can we move on to carrot and stick? Because I need to elevate soon. Yes, I, I yeah, and I need to get off. The, I'm having a family emergency going on, so yeah, I need to get off here too. So uh, I will let you do the carrot, and I'll do the stick. That work? Okay, sure. Wanna... Okay. So Stacey Abrams, as those of you in the political know, know may remember that this Georgia Democrat uh, narrowly lost her bid to become the nation's first black female governor. Well, that was due to a lot of election mess, irregularities, non-standardized, just all, oh, just bad. <laughs> there were so many problems with people casting ballots and the rolls and everything else. Well, she has taken that and turned it into a positive thing, and she's launched a voter protection program in the battleground states ahead of the 2020 election. So it's her voting rights crusade. She's been talking about it all along, but this initiative is called Fair Fight 2020. Um, it takes the same for the organization that she founded after she lost that bid. Excuse me. <clears throat> She's going to be announcing the program Tuesday, which, what day is it for? Today, <laughs> uh, at the International, U International Union of Painters and Allied Trades in Las Vegas. So she was thinking about running for president, but instead she's doing this to try to make sure our elections are fair. It is expected to cost between four and five million dollars. They're targeting 20 states, uh, most of them back, but battleground states in the Midwest and Southeast, and three states with gubernatorial elections this year, Kentucky, Louisiana, and Mississippi. And she deserves the care for that because especially because of the situation, you know, with her election. <laughs> was very shady uh the lieutenant uh, he was the uh, uh he was the uh attorney general uh of the state and he mm -hmm. basically pur purged and it was just yeah brian kemp yeah yeah he it, it became almost a you know his name became a verb because he kemped to that election like, mm -hmm. It was just horrifying the, the, what took place there. And this is hard work. I've worked, you know, on election protection and studies in the past, and I'm glad she's taking this on. So carrots for her. Yes. Now for the stick. Uh, as September put it, this little shit. <laughs> <laughs> police, in yeah, police in Springfield, Missouri, arrest a man on Tuesday at, uh, Thursday afternoon after he walked into a Walmart armed with a rifle and wearing body armor. Yeah, I am not going to pronounce his name because his name is incredibly insane. But basically, he walks into a Walmart. He has 100 rounds on him. He was stopped by an off-duty firefighter until the police arrived, and they took him into custody. You know, and he was videotaping himself. You know, they don't know why he did it, but he was video. He was had a cell phone. Well, they the sort of do. Um, there are other stories I've seen around this where he's been on Facebook saying that he um, he was 
tweeting at Walmart or about Walmart and like they don't support the Second Amendment, but I can walk in there and fully armed and they're not going to do nothing. He was trying to prove some kind of point, which is ridiculous. Yes, it is, it's completely ridiculous. And, you know, I mean, there were there were people there were people that were massacred, you know, in a Walmart with the guy very similar. And this is, you know, it's it, it's 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 wrong. And, you know, I don't know if there's any charges they can really do other than possibly trespassing. I don't know what the, the gun laws are. I don't know if they're an open and carry state in Missouri. But that's also part oh, of Oh, here we problem. go. Here's his Facebook post in February. It's official. I hate Walmart. Apparently, they won't sell rifle and shotgun ammo if you're under 21. New policy. However, I can walk in the store with a loaded 40 cal and nobody says anything. What a joke. <sighs> Yeah, this open carry shit. And, and that and that was part of the problem with Texas is there was an open carry law, so you could. And the next day there was vid, there's pictures of guys, you know, in El Paso wandering around with guns strapped to their backs, the same kind of guns, going to like Starbucks. Mm-hmm. I also want to throw one else out because this one. Um, and this is, you know, something that we, it's a news article. Uh, we're going to be doing news next week, but I wanted to touch on this one. There's another stick, unfortunately, and it's ice, you know, because what, four or five days after that mass shooting in El Paso uh, that was, you know, posted with a scree about shooting immigrants, ICE goes and raids a plant in Mississippi to, um, you know, arrest undocumented workers you know <laughs> i'm like that's great optics yeah that works really well you yeah at least even if you're going to do it and i disagree with it because it's come out that that particular one of those particular plants that was rated just had to, the the coke brothers had to pay 3.5 million dollars uh over over harassment sexual uh racial and all this other harassment and then suddenly <laughs> there's this raid going on at this facility can, you know, can we give another anonymous carrot to the whoever yeah. made the meme about how the narrative is that immigrants are such deadbeats but ice keeps raiding work facilities <laughs> yeah no that's a definite carrot yeah uh, <laughs> because it's true it, it's it's it, it's true because you know it's like these are deadbeats and they're, li and, or, you know, but then they'll come around and say, oh, but they're taking our jobs. Are you really going to work in a church and a chicken plant? I've seen what they have to do in those chicken plants. Right. No, you know, no, I'm not going to work there. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll go hungry oh, first. Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, that was just bad timing, bad optics and everything else. So they get, you know, ice and this kid, you know, who is radicalized for the most part. Mm-hmm. So many of these amosexuals are so young. Like, I don't know I how know. they got that better that fast. It makes me sad. It, it does. But, and that's why we need to start having discourse and stuff like that. So, again, thank you for joining us at Heresy and Hearsay. I'm Reverend Barney, and you can follow me on Twitter at Seth Roth II. You can also find the show on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, any podcast catcher. We also have our website at heresyandhearsay.com. You can just Google us. Don't forget our Patreon where you, for $2 a month, you can help us keep going. And I'm September. You can follow me on Twitch and Twitter at 9 of 12 and hear me on the Geek Grills podcast. Thanks for listening today and bless your hearts. Diamond. All right. I Diamond need to call Club. my uncle. You his pet this just wait, died wait. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, I need to be quiet for 10 seconds. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> okay. I threw a bumper in. I know you can't hear that, but it'll save me like oh, okay. a, a few seconds of editing time later. <laughs> I'm sorry. So nice to see you, everyone. Um, oh, I know you didn't, Meerkat. I figured you were like multitasking or something. Um, but goodness, we have <laughs> a whole lot of people here with us today, and we're wrapping up. So let's raid someone. Mm, do you guys, you guys want to raid a gamer? Or Mike TV was doing music, or what? I don't know why Night Attack was on earlier and isn't now. 
<laughs> opinions, opinions. Uh, let's go with the gamer. Let's go with Joss. I don't think we've ever rated Joss plays. Rated Joss plays. Okay. Thanks for coming, everybody. Hopefully, we'll see you next week. Oh, I'm under radar king. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel. It's okay. Plays. Oh, because I'm doing it wrong. Because I can't type. Oh, it says I already have a raid in progress. So apparently it worked. I don't know. That's ridiculous. Alright, let's stop our stream. It says it's in progress. Twitch is being weird. So what's going on, Barney? Are you going to be all right? I'll be fine. My uncle just lost his pet, and he's been suicidal about losing this pet. And so... Oh. I, yeah, I, I've gotten, like, blasted. He called me in the middle of, the, of us recording. And so I was like... And then I've got all these Facebook messages, and I'm like, hey, you know, this is the situation. I can't... I was busy, could not call or talk to him, call him back, you know, that's it, that's why his phone was busy, he was trying to call me. I know where it was. So, yeah, no, it, it just, you know, it all happened, like, 